So I call the member for Maitland. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Society has no more important role than ensuring that our children are able to grow and thrive safely. We must preserve the innocence of our kids and ensure that they are free from harm in schools, at home and in the community. Today in this place I moved a notice of motion calling on the government to conduct consultations on the increasing number of sexual assaults at primary and secondary schools in this state as well as vocational institutions as part of the development of the New South Wales government's sexual assault strategy. Recently, the Department of Education released figures which revealed that the number of teachers terminated due to allegations of sexual abuse and misconduct has almost doubled from 12 teachers in 2009 to 20 teachers in 2016. According to their own consultation report on the sexual assault strategy found on the government's website, they acknowledge that children and juveniles are seven and a half times more likely than adults to be a victim of sexual offences and seven and a half more times likely to be a victim of a sexual assault. It is completely inexcusable that in this modern era, 20 teachers have been stood down for alleged acts of sexual abuse or misconduct. Those who would inflict harm on our children must be removed from our schools and never allowed to return. But most importantly, they should never have been employed in the first place. There have also been disturbing numbers of cases involving children committing sexual assaults on other children at primary schools, with victims being as young as five or six years of age. Last year, after one such case where two year six students allegedly sexually assaulted a six-year-old girl, the Shadow Minister for Education and I requested a briefing from the Minister to elaborate on this matter. Whilst the department representative told us that the response of the, about the response of the school to this act, they were unable to provide any briefing about the prevalence of these crimes across our education system, or even a case, uh, or even briefing about a case which had occurred at a private primary school in early 2016. I do not blame the department's representative for this, for it was not her role to know or provide this information. However, the question for me remains unanswered. What is the government doing from a strategic view to address sexual assault, harassment and rape in our schools? With the recent release of statistics on the number of teachers who have been terminated due to sexual assault of students, it has been revealed that for the last six years this government has been asleep at the wheel on this issue. In September 2016, Sydney Morning Herald journalist Rachel Olding reported that the only service that deals with rehabilitate, rehabilitating children who commit sexual crimes, New Street, has a waiting list that is four times the capacity of the program. And earlier that year, in April 2016, Patrick Begley, also of the Sydney Morning Herald, reported that children commit up to half of all child sex abuse and that half of that involves a, a sibling molesting another. More than 800 children are reported in New South Wales each year for causing serious sexual harm to other children and much of the abuse goes unreported. According to Mr Begley, in April 2016, two years after a report recommending doubling the number of clinics, the government has no plans to increase funding. I have been agitating for some time about the completion of the government's sexual assault strategy, but it appears that the government has significantly failed to take responsibility for its obligations to provide the earliest interventions to rehabilitate children who sexually abuse other children, and in the case of the Department of Education, who against teachers who sexually abuse their students. It appears that the government is even failing to ensure that the teachers who look after our students, those who could provide positive role models for all young people, are safe to be in schools. I know that the vast majority of teachers in our school system are excellent, that they do all they can to provide excellent teaching and life skills to all our students, but the government must do better in ensuring that those teachers who exploit and assault our students are never employed at all. In recent years, our newspapers, radios and television screens have been filled with instances of teachers acting improperly towards children. This month, a Central Coast primary school teacher was sentenced to nine months intensive care order after being caught with dozens of images of child pornography. In January, a teacher who formerly taught at a private primary school was sentenced to jail for 11 years after he was found guilty of sexually abusing six children. And in another disturbing case, an assistant principal was charged with sexually abusing young boys between 12, 10 and 12 over a period of 10 years. The Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse has revealed the widespread abuse of kids in, our, in places we used to think were safe. The local churches, the local scout clubs, the local sporting clubs and even the schools our children attend. 
Mr Speaker, I deal with these questions every day and I want the government to act on this issue. There is no more important issue for the development of students and young people in our schools. Oh, no. You must act now. I call